Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on some of the additional functions within the DAX expression language. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll start with looking at how to return a subset of the rows in a table using the filter function. We'll then go on to look at the rank x function to create sort orders, firstly with calculated columns and then with calculated fields. We'll then look at two worked examples for the earlier function, firstly to mimic the rank x function and secondly as a way of creating group averages. So let's get started. This tutorial will use the following data model, based on the one introduced in part 9 of this series. So if you haven't already done so, I'd recommend going through the tutorial number 9 in this series on calculated fields. Not only will it show you how to set up this data model, but more importantly, it will show the concepts of query context, which are vital to understanding this tutorial as well. What we're going to do is to divide our sales up into cheap and expensive. And so we'll have three columns appearing in the pivot table, cheap goods, expensive and total. The criteria I'll use for cheap and expensive are shown here. The cheap will mean that the price was less than 10, expensive means it was 10 or more. Now one way to solve this problem would be to create calculated columns. So I could go to my transactions table and I could create two columns, one called cheap purchases, which will say if the price is less than 10 I'll use the quantity, and one called expensive purchases, which will do the mirror image and say if the price is 10 or more I'll use the quantity. The sum of these two will always give the total sales. What I could then do in my pivot table is I could choose to display the cheap, expensive purchases and also the grand total. And in every case, cheap plus expensive should give total. So I'm looking at retail parks here, and 873 for birds plus 416 does indeed give me 1289. I said that would be one way to do it. It wouldn't exactly be cheating, but it certainly wouldn't demonstrate how to use the filter function. So what I'm going to do instead is to create a calculated, calculated field to do the same thing. I'm going to put it in the transaction table, and I'll call it cheap. I'm going to use the sumx function because I'm doing something more complicated than just simple summing. The table I'm summing over isn't really a table at all, it's a subset of the table's records. I'm going to filter them. So I'm going to take the transactions table and filter it using an expression. The expression is that the price should be less than 10. And it's a general rule in Power Pivot that nearly always, whenever you can use a table, you can also use a filter function to return a subset of a table, or indeed more records than the query context would otherwise return, but that's beyond the subject of this tutorial. The expression I'm going to sum is going to be the quantity, and I can check my formula and then format it to dis and choose to display it in my pivot table, and that will give me my cheap uh, purchases. I'm going to do the same thing now to do create an expensive one. So I'll call this expensive. And my function is going to be almost exactly the same, but the only difference will be that instead of uh, the filter expression being that the price should be less than £10, I'm going to put greater than or equal to £10. The thing I'm summing is still the quantity. Just check that, format it and you'll see it will display it alongside the cheap ones. I can add the quantity in for effect, and you can see that cheap plus expensive does equal quanti uh, total again. I think this example illustrates uh, an important point about the filter function. I always find it more complicated to use than the calculate function, and by and large, in general, I'm not saying this is always the case, you can usually avoid using it, either, as in this case, by creating calculated fields, or by using the calculate function. So it does have a place, but I don't think I would make it first on my learning list. My ultimate aim for this part of the tutorial is to show how to rank the species according to the total quantity of sales for each. But before we can do that, let's look at something simpler, which is how to rank within a calculated column. I'm going to go back into the Power Pivot data model and go to my center table. And what I want to do is rank the centers according to the size of them, defined by how many units there are within each. To do this, I can create a new calculated column and type in the rank x function. 
The table I'm going to rank over is obviously the centre table, and the expression I'm going to rank by is probably equally obviously the number of units. There's five arguments to the rank x function, and we'll be looking at the other three in more detail in a second. For the moment, I'm just going to close the brackets and just put in the two compulsory ones and press return. What it will do is create the ranking. I'll just rename this column and call it something more sensible. Rather, let's call it sort order. It's done something slightly surprising, and it's easier to see this if I were to sort it by the number of units. You can see that the one with the fewest units has actually got the highest sort order, and conversely if I change the sort order, number one in sort order is the one with the most units. The reason for this is the rank x function by default sorts things into descending order. It's the only time I've ever seen this in any Microsoft software, but hey ho. Let's have a look at the full range of arguments for the rank x function. There's five of them. The first one is the table you're ranking over. The second one is the expression you're ranking by. We then have this third argument, the substitution value, which gives you a weird chance to do hypothetical sorting, and it's so strange it's, I'm not going to include it in this tutorial. The fourth argument is whether you're sorting in ascending or descending order. But astonishingly, the default is descending. So what I need to do is add in the word true for this argument to answer the question, are you sorting in ascending order? And that will reverse the sort order. And I'll have a look at the ties shortly. So if I go back to my, my uh, function, I'm going to have to miss out the weird third argument by typing in a comma as a placeholder. And then I can type true as the value for the fourth argument to say, yes, I want to sort in ascending order. And when I press return, it will change the sort order. And you can see again, if I sort the number of units in ascending order, then my sort order looks much more sensible. Just to sort out the ties, by default, when you're using rank x, the numbers will go 1. There's a three-way tie for second place, 2, 2, 2. And then the next number we'll pick up on is 5. That's using skip. We can actually use dense as a value for the fifth argument. So for the ties. And what that will do instead is to go 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, etc. And to see this, I can just edit my, my formula. I can type in the word dense. There's no point typing skip because that's the default. And when I press return, you can see it changes the numbering system. I hope that's helped somebody. As promised, what we're going to do now is to sort the species according to the total quantity sold. If this works, you'd expect amphibian to be number one because it had the smallest total sales quantity and mammal to be number four. We're going to need to create a new calculated field which we'll put in the transaction table and we'll call sort order. The function we'll use for this is the rank x function as it was before. Could I better spell it? The table we're ranking over is the species table and the thing we're ranking by is the total quantity. So I can type in sum of the quantity. I'm going to put two commas in to miss out the weird third argument and for the fourth argument I'm going to put the word true because I want to rank things in ascending order. I'll leave the formatting as general, it will still work, check my formula works and then choose OK. Now I don't know how well you're doing at understanding DAX expressions but if you're thinking there's something wrong with that and it won't give the correct answer, you're quite correct. So let's see that if you choose OK and it gives me one in each case. There's actually two separate problems with this. Let's look at each in turn. If I go back into my calculated field and edit it, what it's doing is working out the total quantity for the species for the current query context. So, for example, for this highlighted cell, it's working out the total sales for mammal is 1893 and ranking that within the mammal uh, uh, dimension element. Not surprisingly, it's the first of one entry, so it gives the number one in each case. The solution to this, which works even if you didn't understand the preceding argument, is to rank over the entire dimension. And what it will now do, rather than ranking just within the mammal, it will rank over the entire species, and so should give me the correct answer. So when I choose OK, I can still see it's not working. The second, pro <coughs> second problem I alluded to is this. If I go back into my sort order and edit it again, what it's doing is calculating the total quantity across all species, which will give me 4806. For each of the four separate species, it will then rank them, which not surprisingly gives the four-way tie. 
And once again, even if you didn't understand that argument, the solution is easy. Instead of using the expression, what I can do is use a measure I've already created, sum of quantity. And this time, when I choose OK, it will actually give me the correct answer in each case, I'm hoping. And there's the correct figures. So the rank x function is fraught with problems when you use it in a calculated field. It's time now to look at what I think is the most complicated function in DAX, the earlier function. See if you agree. We're going to do two examples. The first one is going to mimic ranking. So I've already created an expression or calculated column which ranks these products according to the full price. You can see the emperor is the most expensive, at the other end of the scale walls are cheapest. What I'm going to do is to add another calculated column to this, and what this will do is to count up how many rows there are in the table. But instead of counting across the entire table of products, which would always obviously give me 13, I'm going to count across a subset of that using the filter function. And the subset is going to be defined by this expression. I'm going to say where the earlier value of the full price, where the earlier value of the full price is greater than this full price. And I'm going to add 1 to the result. Before I even attempt to explain it, let's see if it actually works. It has done. I'm just going to rename that with something I've got in my clipboard. And now I'll have a go at explaining it. I'm going to consider the example of Slithery, which costs 4 point, or the list price is 7.5. What this function is doing is counting how many rows there are in the products table, where this particular price, which is 7.5, is greater than or equal to the full price. If I try doing that, I'll end up with 3, Wall at 3.95, Snowy at 4.75, and Sean at 5.5. So the answer to my question is there's three rows for where for this particular row its full price is greater than the full price. I add 1 to the result to get the ranking so that I get the number 4 rather than 3. So that's one example of using the earlier function. Do you think it's got a sensible name? I'm not convinced I do. For the second example on the earlier function, I'm going to show the average price for each gender. Now I've got a problem, I'm not displaying the gender name, and it's not even in my underlying data model. So what I'm going to do as a quick bit of revision is to add in the target gender table. I can do that by going to my existing connections, I must have some, double clicking what is almost certainly the one to SQL Server to go into it, clicking on next, choosing the target gender table, and what I'm going to do is remove the TBL to give it a more sensible name and then choose finish. It will then add that table into my data model, and what I can then do is to connect that up to the product table. To do that, I can drag from the child to the parent to create my relationship, and I've got my table in my data model. What I'm now going to do is go back to my product table, and I'm going to reference that by using the related function. All of this was covered in previous tutorials. So I'm going to pick up on the target gender name from the target gender table and bring that into my product table. I'll rename that and call it gender to make it clear what it's doing. And then I can refer to that. So to recap on what my earlier function is going to do, it's going to show the average full price for each gender. For female, which I now see I've spelt wrongly there, this will be 3.95. The average of 3.95 is 3.95. For male and both, it'll be a bit more complicated because there's more values to average over. To see how this works, let's create the formula. My function will be average x because I want to do something more than just straightforward averaging. The table I'm averaging over is the set of rows for this row's gender. So I need to create a filter to filter the entire table of products. And what I'm going to filter it by is an expression and perhaps I'll come back again and explain this in a bit, which says where the earlier gender equals gender. That's my filter expression. That's my subset of data I'm going to be averaging over. The thing I'm actually averaging is the full price. Now, before I even attempt to explain this, let's see if it's actually worked. If I press return, you can see that looks quite plausible. The figure for female is indeed 3.95. The figure for male is the same for every single case, as indeed it should be, as 11.1225, and likewise the figure for both is the same for every single case. So what's the function actually doing? The, the critical thing is this part of the expression, where it's saying the filter. 
It's averaging over the set of products which match up by gender. So let's take the example again of Slithery. If you look at Slithery, Slithery is male. And what this will do is take the average full price where the this particular product's gender, the, which is expressed by earlier gender, matches up to the gender. So it will effectively take the average price of the cells I'm s selecting here, uh, that one for the Emperor who's male, that one for Slithery who's male, that one for Crocky who's male, also Sean who's male, and that's about it. And the average of those four numbers will be 11.1225. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.